Psalm chapter 46. I was reading this chapter last week and God set my soul on fire with it. I just want to give you what the Lord has put in my spirit. The Holy Spirit told me this morning to preach this tonight. And he understands all about it, don't he? The Bible says, God is our refuge. Boy, we could stop right there, couldn't we? And strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Verse number four. There is a river. That's all I'm going to read. I want to preach tonight on there is a river. The psalmist here in Psalm 46 begins to lay out what could be some of the most devastating circumstances upon earth. If the mountains fall away or if the earth be removed or if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, he says, there is a river. Almost to say that there is a river and that that river is the solution to the problem. And in this chapter, we find here uh, about this river. And as I read this, I thought, well, what does that have to do with anything? Is the Word of God here referencing a physical river? Is the Word of God here referring to the Euphrates River, which was one of the main rivers of supply that flew flew by and supplied the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis? Is the Word of God referencing to the great Nile River or the river of Egypt that Moses floated down? What what river is God talking about? And I begin to think and ponder and study thinking, what is this river that can fix anything? I do not believe that this scripture is referencing a physical river. I believe with every fiber in me that the Word of God is referencing a supernatural river. Preacher! And as I studied this, I could not help but think that there are things about physical rivers that tie to this spiritual river that will apply to our lives. Uh, I found out that when I did my study on this rivers, I found out that there are about 160 main rivers all across the world. Nearly all of them start at a point and all of them end up going to the ocean. Uh, All of these different rivers have different, uh, there, there are a few of them that flow north, but nearly all of them flow south. And on this river and on this study of the river, I found out, number one, that every river has a source. Every river has a source. Last year, I had the privilege of going to the Holy Land. The Word of God over and over and over talks about the Jordan River. And the Jordan River, you know, they talk about putting your feet in the water and and, and going across is a type of the victorious life. And it's a type of crossing over from death unto life. It's a type of death and going to heaven. We we know that. but, But as I went to the Jordan River, many times we went to certain places and parts of the Jordan River. And then finally... 
near the end of the trip, we went so far up into that country and we got to the area where they called the gates of hell that the Word of God references. And right beside where the gates of hell that the Word of God speaks of underneath Mount Hermon, where the tallest mountain in that part of the world is, right at the very basin of that mountain, there is a deep gorge that goes underneath that mountain and bubbling up at the basin of that mountain is the source of the Jordan River flowing out of the bottoms of the earth. It's the most pure, crystal clean uh, water flowing off of Mount Hermon under sprinkling out of the ground and flowing and springing out of the ground is the very source that feeds that entire river. And the source of the Jordan River way down the stream you may see water but honey it must come to one conclusion that there has to be a beginning point and there has to be a starting point to this river and may I say spiritually speaking there is a river for the child of God and in every river that you'll ever find there is a source the book of John chapter number 7 he said whoso believeth in him there shall be rivers of water flowing from his belly honey did you know if you're saved that there are rivers flowing out of your belly and I know when the river gets active because it'll start flowing out your eyes and that river begins to flow and the power begins to flow but honey you better get one thing right that there is a river but there's also a source and that source you say where'd that source come from let me tell you what I thought about right over there Jesus Christ is up on the cross he's been hanging there for a while and he just won't die so those men think they're going to speed the process up they go to break his legs but they didn't do it and they took a spear and they pierced that spear into the side of Jesus and when they pierced that spear into the side of Jesus your King James Bible said that out came blood and water out of the side of Jesus flowed a raging river of water and when they pierced his side they didn't know what they was doing but they opened up a well and a river of water that opened up the doors to whosoever will I thank God today that there is a river and it has a source let me ask you this can you remember your source I remember when I was so thirsty. I remember when I was when I was thirsting to death trying to drink from religion. And it didn't satisfy me. I went to the I went to the watering hole of the world and drank as much as I could and didn't find no no lasting quenching of my thirst. Yeah, I've had friends that have dove a million miles into that cesspool trying to find a drink to satisfy them, only to wind up thirstier. Oh, but one day... One day a man of God began to preach about a well of water that would spring up and I didn't know all about it. I didn't understand all about it, but I blessed the name of Jesus for that wonderful day that I got a drink from the well of water of the Holy Ghost of God. And could I say, I've been thy thirsted since because I found in Jesus what I could not find in the world. There was a woman that came to a well one day. John chapter 4. Is this good preaching or bad preaching? Good preaching. A woman comes to the well one day thirsty. She was from the wrong side of the tracks. 
She was yeah. from Samaria. Yeah, yeah. She had to come when the Jewish women weren't there. Preacher, yeah. preacher. You ever felt like you was from the wrong side of the tracks? Yeah. Come on. Come on. You had to get there when the religious folk have done left. Yeah. Yeah. She was from the wrong side of the tracks, but I'm glad Jesus don't give a rip what side of the tracks you're from. And she came to the well, and seated there on the well was a man. She said, don't you know that the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealings with one another? Jesus didn't even respond. Because you can't put Jesus in a box, y'all. No, that crowd that the religious folk said Jesus won't have nothing to do with, Jesus will go right by the religious folk and get to them and leave you alone. <laughs> and so there that woman is coming to the well, and there's Jesus seated on the well. He don't have no bucket. He don't have nothing to get water out of that well. I think it's wonderful that Jesus will position himself in between you and what you think you need. Oh, yes. So you can find out what you really need. Can I get a witness? Yeah, you thought you needed a little bit of crack pipe. You thought you needed a little bit of sex. You, you thought you needed little drugs. You thought you needed this or that. But right in the middle of what you thought you needed, God popped himself in front of you, and you thought he was standing in the way of what you needed. But thank God for the day that you found out what you really needed was a drink from him. And Jesus began to preach to this woman about everlasting water. He said, honey, you drink out of that water, you'll thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Watch this. But it shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. When I got saved, that source of that water was placed on the inside of me. And I thank God that living inside of me right now at this very moment is the source of the power of the waters that God put deep down on the inside of my spirit. I thank God that there is one and his name is the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells and inhabits the inside of of every man, woman, boy, or girl. It matters not if you're white or you're black, rich or poor, Chinese, Japanese, where you're from. It don't matter. But God will indwell a man and indwell and live inside you. And I thank God the most precious times of my life is when I can feel that well and that river begin to move and the power of God begins to live up and bubble up on the inside of me. You say, I just don't know what you're talking about. If you got saved tonight, you would know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Something as big as God going to get in something as little as you and I, he going to stick out somewhere. The source of that river is living and dwelling Amen. on the inside of me. Amen. The source. Yeah. There is a river yeah. that flows from deep within. Yeah. And there is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. Come to this water, for there is a vast supply. There is a river that never shall run dry. There came a thirsty woman. She was drawing from a well. 
her life it was ruined and wasted and her soul was bound for hell oh but then she met the master who told of her great sin he said if you'll just drink from the water you'll never thirst again there is a river. Could I say that the source of those rivers are so clean that they can clean up everything around them? The waters are so pure at the source that you look down and the rocks and the dirt even looks clean in the water. I mean, you look down, you can see your image in the, in the water going down. It's pristine. You just want to jump and lay in it because any dirt on you, any, any imperfection, that water has the ability to cleanse you off. And could I say, I thank God that I may have come to him as a dirty sinner and I may have come to him with the filth of this world on me, but I'm glad he didn't leave me like he found me. But that water of his word and the power of the blood, it may have found me as a dirty man. I but I thank God that after that river began to flow on the inside of me, it washed me up and cleaned me up and made a new man out of me. This water has a source. This river has a source. And then I see that this river has a supply. Now watch this. I, I, I like this. I studied these rivers and I found out that in early civilizations, people did everything they could to settle beside the river. You know why? Because your crops grew better by the river. You didn't have to travel far to get to water when you lived by the river. You could get the fish by the river. And there was a common place to live by the river. Which made my mind go to another psalm, chapter number one, where it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Yeah. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now notice this. The emphasis is not saying that it's a good tree. The emphasis is not saying that this tree has a special ability to produce fruit. It's, it's, it's the same tree as way back in the woods. The only difference that makes this tree produce fruit is it's living and it's planted right by the river. Could I say the best way to live your Christian life is just put your high waters on and just live out in the water. Wait out a little bit deeper. The book of Ezekiel talked about those rivers of revival and it said that he went out a little bit and the water was up to his ankles. They measured another thousand and the water came to his knees. They went out a little farther and it was up to the groin and went a little further. And when I went a little further, he said the waters were too deep to pass over and he said this, they were waters to swim in. Could I say I thank God God, that how deep you get is up to you. How deep you get is all up to you. The water's there. The depths are there. And it's based on you and I to figure out, am I going to get one step in? Or am I going to get two steps in? Am I going to get three steps in? But I thank God for the day when I said, you losers, you can stay up on the bank. I'm going to jump on 
in. I, I'm going to get as deep as I can go. I want all of God. If it feels good here, it's really going to feel good out there. I ain't never sat on the sidelines. I ain't never wanted to get halfway in. No, honey. I wanted everything. I wanted all it had to offer. I'm telling you, get in the water tonight. The supply yes, sir. of the water. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. They said that the Nile River would flood every year in September, October is the rainy season. And this river would flood. They said they hated that river flood. And they said it was a they tried to do everything they could to figure a way to block that river in certain ways so it wouldn't flood every year. So every year they would build up by the river and then they'd have to move out. Then they'd have to move back in and rebuild, move out. And they said it was a nemesis to that race and that group of people in those days. Until later, they found out that the source made that water flood and that the Nile River would flood up over into those valleys and into that place. And there was a special sut that laid and was produced on the bottom of the Nile River. Don't miss this. And only when those waters would rise and the waters would flood the plains, that sut would rise to the surface, flood those plains, and it fertilized everything around it. And they would not have the crops that they had had the flood not came. Come on. Could I say this river, sometimes the supply of it comes in ways you and I would not choose. Sometimes this river has a mind of its own. You have not met a more powerful instrument and element in this world than water. God chose water to judge the earth. And flood because it has powers of destruction. And sometimes if you're not careful, you'll think God's trying to hurt you. When he ain't trying to hurt you, he's trying to fertilize you. And then when you get a few years behind you, you'll look back and say, you know what? If God hadn't have done that, I'd have never had that fruit and I'd never be where I'm standing. Can anybody by faith agree with the preacher tonight that the supply of God and that river has the ability to fertilize us? The supply. Everything that the people needed in those days came from river and they just learned to stay beside the river I don't understand why it's in me the same way it's in you that it's easy for me to stay by the river when everything's good but the second things get hard I want to run from the river when I ought to be staying right there there's something in me that makes me run away when I need to stay right beside the river. Because the truth is, everything that I have in my life today that's lasting fruit, it came from standing by the river. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, hallelujah, I'm about to run a lap. But God saved me. It wasn't long after that, after God saved me, God called me to preach. I was three years in, I was in business college. I was going after, I was going to be a businessman. I was going to make money and I was going to flick boogers at Baptist. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to do. I didn't like them. I still don't half of them. <laughs> But I was going to go make money, get me a job, and tell them all. I was raised in I, I, My dad was a pastor. I saw how they treated him. And I thought, you think I'm going to get treated like that? <laughs> and I learned not to tell God what I'm not going to do. And God up and called me to preach. 
I went in one day. Next thing I know, they's having a meeting, and I went to the West Virginia Jubilee, and the preacher got up there. And next, uh, within the next couple weeks, God said, boy, I want you to go off to Bible school, and I want you to go sit under that man and learn how to preach. Had my girlfriend, had my job, had everything standing by those waters. But God said, I want you to leave those waters, and I want you to learn to come stand by the river. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. This, this river is where you need to plant. And I went by myself. I went and quit my job, broke up my girlfriend, left everything I had, told my mom and dad bye, moved seven hours away, did not know one person, moved into a roach-infested dormitory. <laughs> I am not lying. I'm still upset about it. And spiritually speaking, I went and I obeyed the voice of God and I said, I don't understand it, Lord. I'm walking away from my dreams and my plans. But if you say this is where I need to be, this is where I'll be. And it wasn't no time, just standing beside the river. I'd say, Lord, my college bill's due. You know I ain't got no money. I'm making $130 a week working over at church, vacuuming, carpeting, cleaning toilets. You know I need some help, Jesus. And I'd look down the river, and here it come. And I'd just reach down and say, you did it again, Lord. I'd say, Lord, I got this need, I got that need, Lord, here. And every, every time, every time, it just right down the river. Right down the river it came. Next thing I know, in the river, spiritually speaking, a girl named Becky comes into my life. And she was three times as pretty as that girl I left back at the house. Oh, yes, I felt something on that one. My wife come along. Yeah. It was by the river. God began to meet our needs and supply us. And God gave us a house to live in. And God's never uh, not paid our bills. And God's never, every, every single time together, she and I have learned just to stick by the river and, and stay there th through the thick and through the thin and through the heartache and through the pain just to stay by the river. And, and some people go and some people leave and some people stay. But I've got to learn that, 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 that my supply is not in people. It's not in the people that used to stand in the river with me, but the supply is in the river. And if I just stay by the river, then God will send the supply. And little by little, little here come little Tucker and here come blessing and here came ministry and here came opportunities and the best days of my life it's not been making money it's not been living for the world but the best days of my life have been pulling my feet up planting in the water and watching God supply my needs according to his riches in glory I'm telling you that God will meet your needs And there were days when I needed a $25 phone bill paid for. And now I'm 31. I'm in ministry. I'm doing all these different things. And in order for us to go do our youth camp this summer, I got to have $25,000 by December 31st. Yeah. Yeah. And Becky says, today, where are we going to get that at? And I say, well, <laughs> it's not let me down yet. 
and, 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 and yeah, and sooner than later around the corner, hey, if God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. And at where God guides, God provides. And I know with all my heart, God told me to do it. And I'm not doing this by myself, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that somewhere down the road, uh, by faith, I'm trusting uh, that it's going to come from the same place. Uh, the river's where God saved me. The river's where God called me. And the river's where God will sustain me. May I say, uh, David said, I've been young uh, and I've been old uh, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Honey, it don't matter if it's one dollar or five million dollars. Uh, God's got your back. Uh, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, the economy in heaven, it's not bankrupt, uh, but God has all power and God can meet your needs. Thomas Steele said the other day, he said, I know we living in a bad economy. He said, but the same money that was in the good economy is still on this earth somewhere. He said, matter of fact, they print more every day. He said, my God knows where it's at. He said, and he knows how to get it. He's a God of supply. Let me ask you a question. What do you need from him tonight? Whether little or large, just stay in the water. And coming through there will be that supply that you need. I see the source of this river. I see the supply of this river. And then lastly, I see the symbol of the river. I know that the river here at times is used as a type of judgment. Waters overflowing and raging and destroying everything around it. And could I say, don't be on the wrong side of the judgment of God. God will judge us if we don't judge ourselves. But I also believe that this river is a primarily a symbol of the Holy Spirit of God that lives and dwells on the inside of our hearts. There's nothing any more precious to me than that spirit that lives on the inside of us. I can be hurting and that spirit speak for me. I can be down and out, discouraged and depressed. No one understand, but he understands. Because he's living and dwelling, that river, that's him. He's a, a type, that, that water in the Bible is a type of the Holy Spirit there that lives and dwells, that continually cleanses us on the inside and, and, and helps us and gives us strength day to day. Tell you this, I, a while back I saw a story that was from over in Asia. And there was a powerful river that flowed down through that part of the world. And all along that river, like I spoke earlier, people lived and tribes lived there by that river. Yes, Little kids played by the river. Families dwelt beside the river. Yes. One day an earthquake came. And the whole side of the mountain fell in and collapsed in that canyon. And it completely blocked up that river. So much so that it turned that river into a lake. And that water backed up and just started making a lake. For a little while, water crept through, but eventually it all just filtered up and stopped completely. And I'll never forget seeing the images of Kids that used to be so happy are now malnourished, no water. The, wa the place where the river used to be is dry and cracking and there's no water, there's no source, and there's no supply. And the picture showed little kids whose ribs were sticking out because all of the supply they used to have is gone now because the source of all their supply was gone. Months and months this went on. 
And finally, they flew people back in there with machinery and different things, and they began to blast that rubble out. Kids were dying of disease. Parents were dying. It was getting bad because there was no water. They began to blast that stuff out of the way. Then the next set of the pictures was weeks later when they finally got the water trickling down again. It didn't happen overnight, but little by little that water began to come back. You could see them little kids just out there laying in that water. They was drinking it. They was loving it. They was swimming in it. And little by little, the source of all their supply begin to come back. As I read that, Brother Bill, I couldn't help but think that's what happens to us. We get saved and we enjoy the goodness of God. We walk into church and they sing Amazing Grace and more tears flow down your eyes and you're just so glad you're not going to hell anymore and glad you're saved and, and glad God's in your life. But what's happened? Now you come to church and you analyze other people. And just because your well's dry, you go picking on other people because their well ain't. We Baptists are as good at judging other people's worship as anybody I know. Well, that little country preacher, not he probably a little too loud. That's right, because you want to sleep through church. It's my job to make sure you don't sleep. Amen. And that spirit of God that lives inside of us, I know what it's like to come to church. And let me say this, church is my six flags. I'd rather go to church than anywhere. I mean, you, I mean, if Becky'd let me, I'd go preach every night of my life. I've been preaching for 28 days straight. This is the 28th night, and I don't give a rip. I'll go 28 more days. I love it. I want some more of it. I mean, it's, it's where I have fun. This is where I get in the water and splash around and have myself a time. It's what I love to do. And I've been in church. I've gone up there to Brother Clemens Church, and we'll get it on like Donkey Kong. I mean, we have a time up there. Uh, if everybody go to church like me and him does, we'd have a good time. I mean, but me and him, we'll have a good time. He'll shout a while. Then I'll shout at him for a while. Then Billy will get in there, and he'll have a, We have a time, and I love it and enjoy the fire out of it. I know what it's like to go to church, and boy, the singers sing of tears run down my eyes. I know what it's like to get on the altar, and the Holy Ghost squeeze me and be able to lift my my hands toward heaven and know that everything's all right between me and God, that to know that peace that passeth all understanding and that joy that comes from God and to look around and say, hallelujah. But listen to me, I also know what it's like to come to church and have to sit by Brother Clement and know I'm being as wicked as a jailbird. And Brother Clemens over saying, yeah, <laughs> amen. And I'm like, I wish he'd be quiet. <laughs> you ever done this? Well, that ain't real. And here's why. I ain't feeling nothing. And I think because I ain't feeling nothing, that he ain't feeling nothing. And the reason is, it's because his river's running and mine ain't. Amen or old me, either one will work. Next time somebody comes to you and says, did you see so-and-so worship? Just say, go get your river fixed and you act like him too. Don't be hating. I know what it's like to sit there on that pew and think, God, what in the world have I done wrong? God, am I even saved? God, we've been in Jubilee and camp meeting all week long. It's Thursday, and I've been doing the motions, and I've been clapping my hands, and I've been smiling, but deep down on the inside, 
I, my river just ain't flowing. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time your river did run? Go back. When was the last time that your river was running? And if you can go back to that place, God will take you to a place and he'll show you what's in that river that's got it blocked up. Have you ever said, Lord, what have I done? And the Holy Spirit will remind you something you did months ago that you didn't ask forgiveness for. The Bible says this. Everybody right here. The Bible says this. If I regard iniquity in mine heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Bible says this. The Bible says a couple of boys came to Jesus one day and brought a gift to him. Jesus said, tell you what, leave your gift here. Go fix things with your brother. Then come back and I'll receive your gift. How we act here matters to God. How we treat other people matters to God. And it has the ability, just like that earthquake did, to knock stuff down in your river and clog up your river and block things up. When was the last time your river was running? You can't even see it, but people around you, like them little kids in that story, are suffering because you're miserable. Your marriage is suffering because your river's not flowing. Your home is suffering. Your kids will grow up as negative people because you've turned into a negative person. Not because you're a bad person, but because you're living with a river that's not running. And you're going to produce kids that have a river that's not running. You see, there's more at stake than just you in this thing. There's a whole other group of folk that are starving to death spiritually because the river's not running. America is in the shape she's in because we've allowed trash to get in that river. And it's not running like it used to. Our preachers are powerless. And we've got pulpiteers that know how to spit out polished sermons that have the ability to be theological and hermeneutically correct and dotted out with great intellectualism. But as Grandpa used to say, it didn't have God on it. Because the river ain't running. There's some of y'all used to get up and sing in that choir. And the power and the presence of God would fall on you. And now, you're dry. Preacher's got to pump you and pry you to get something out of you. And you're mechanical. But could I say, you don't have to be mechanical. If you let that water start raging again, it's like a power supply. Hydroelectricity. It'll get in there and start churning. And it'll clean up them cobwebs. And it won't take long. Let me ask, what would you give to be able to walk out those doors tonight and have that river running inside you again? Well, I come to tell you it can be. 1 John 1, 9 said, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And before you know it, that river start running again and you say hallelujah good to be saved whoa hallelujah it's quiet in here because you all know I'm telling the truth and let me say this everybody in this room from the best Christian to the worst Christian has all dealt with this we all know what it's like to get our river clogged up. It's Thursday night. We got tonight and tomorrow night. That's all you got left. Don't go another night with your river not flowing. David said, search me, Lord. See if there's any wicked way in me. Preachers need to get on this altar tonight and say, Lord, clean me up. Mamas and daddies, for the sake of your children, need to come get on this altar and say, Lord, let my river flow again. Sunday school teachers, altar workers, piano players, choir members need to get on the altar and say, Lord, don't let me operate with my river not flowing.
grandmas and grandpas, mamas and daddies, with heads bowed and eyes closed tonight. They're going to sing a song. I wonder how many people would respond to what God spoke to your heart tonight and just come get her place on this altar and say, Lord, I want my river to flow again. I want my tears to flow again. I want the power of God to be active in my life again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep coming, keep coming right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Lord, move in my heart again. You say, I'm a visitor tonight. It don't matter. Come to Jesus. Come let Jesus do some work on you tonight. Get that river flowing again. Girls, you say.